Hey people, Fernando with another video here for the channel. So I just finished doing the video regarding ammunition. How much ammo do you actually need? I talked about Wild Bill Hickok, a man that was not only just a, a, a legendary figure, a, a very well-known gunfighter, sheriff, you know, a, a man that, you know, he had a, a way with guns and he was very clever about it in terms of always reloading every single day his, his guns so as to keep fresh rounds in there and also practice while at it. Now, I, I was thinking as I finished the video about, well, how much good did all of this actually do while Bill Hickok? Hickok died at the age of 39 and it wasn't because he was uh, losing in a, in, in a duel, in a gunfight. He died by gunfire though, but where he failed was at this. As smart as he was, as clever as he was, he messed up in one aspect of his preparedness. So he was very good at it. He was a you know very well-known gunfighter. So beating him in a, in a fair fight, so to say, yeah, that was not easy. But what ended up costing his life was awareness. And this is something that I have a dedicated chapter in my book. And it's right here, Awareness When Enders. This is what ended up costing Wild Bill Hickok his life. So Hickok died at the age of 39 in Deadwood, and that's Dakota Territory in those days. 1876, if I remember correctly, he dies in, uh, in, in, a, in a tavern where he was playing cards. So as you probably know, Wild Bill Hickok, besides being sheriff and all that, he was a professional player. He liked playing cards, he liked gambling. So, and he was pretty successful at it uh, himself. Um, so he, he had played cards uh, and, and won nicely the day before he died, uh, winning uh, against a man called Jack McCall. He, I, if I remember well, he, he won like $150 which is a lot of money in those days. Uh, Jack McCall, a man that had a problem with alcohol, he was not exactly happy uh, about his loss. Uh, Hickok has this gesture of uh, giving him back a little bit of money so as to buy himself breakfast or lunch or you know get himself some food. Uh, and McCall uh, takes this as a personal insult rather than a, um, a gesture, a, a goodwill gesture. He takes it this way so much. And there's a lot of debate about later during the trial, it's been said that uh, McCall was paid to kill uh, Hickok by some of the other gamblers uh, or people that didn't want him as a sheriff in Deadwood. So there's a lot of debate regarding that. But the, 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 the version that it seems to be the most solid is that it was a grudge because of uh, the money lost. So uh, Hickok being a, a gambler goes back to play cards the following day and when he arrives he sees that his usual seat is already taken. Hickok being the clever person that he was, he always sat with his back towards the wall facing the door, the entry. Why? Well, because given that he was precautious, smart in nature, he always knew that given his fame and his reputation and his you know, law enforcement uh, background, having been a sheriff, people that could come back for payback eventually, uh, grudges during gambling, or just someone looking to make a name for himself by shooting him, he always had his back covered and always facing the door of uh, the, the tavern or wherever he was playing. Now, in this occasion, someone is, uh, the only seat left is with the back towards the door. And he doesn't like that. There's actual witnesses that say that he asked twice one of the men playing cards for his seat. And this man refused twice telling him, oh, I'm not moving. I just sit down. Eventually, Hickok sits down with his back towards the door. And what would you know? Um, Jack McCall goes through that door and he says take this and shoots him right in the back of the head. He shoots Hickok with a Colt 45 revolver in the back of the skull. The round goes through his cheek so with so much force that it ends up injuring the wrist of the man that was playing in the same table. 
dies instantly. So, just a moment in which he didn't follow his normal habit of being conscious and sitting with his back towards a wall facing the door, that ends up costing him his life. This is a lesson right there, guys. This is a lesson in terms of your EDC. Do you have your gun with you? No, I cannot carry a gun. Okay, do you have your knife with you? Do you know what you do? Do you actually have a plan? It's more about the plan than it is about all of this stuff. What killed Wild Bill Hickok was not the lack of ammunition, was not how fast or slow he was. It's the level of awareness. He just let his guard down during a moment, and that moment is what got him killed. Now, this applies to us all. I always try to sit in that same way. In this chapter, I explain. Ideally, you sit facing the main entrance. Ideally, you enter and notice any emergency exits. You always want to have at least two exit points sometimes there's only one the one you just went walk through okay that's the case but identify any other potential exits that you may have scan and see if there's any weird behavior of the people in inside uh, sit with your back towards a, a, a wall if you can facing the main entrance and also as close as you can to the potential emergency exit that would be ideal of course today we face certain challenges okay we, we don't face certain challenges that wild bill hickok did but we face different challenges maybe we're not so worried about you know being gunned down in the wild west we were still being worried about being gunned down in an inner city environment or some lunatic in our nice little suburb or some criminal attacking us in our you know out in the sticks home or uh, being shot by some madman in a movie theater so all of these things still apply now i'm not talking about losing your mind being paranoid none of that no i'm just talking about making certain calculated decisions that we should do all the time as people that are into preparedness uh, as a survivalist, you scan, you make all of these decisions just to make them get the maximum benefit, the maximum amount of advantages from every decision we make. At least that's the way I think. And yes, I've been in, at times sitting in places that I felt super uncomfortable. I mean, it was just recently I was with friends in this place and I had my back towards the, 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 the main door and it was super uncomfortable. I just could not really relax. I was always, you know, checking my back and feeling, you know, some, my, my pockets, it, it just gives you a sense of vulnerability that if you're not, you know, if you're used to having this kind of mindset, this is very uncomfortable for you. And it is okay that it's that way because this means that you will try to play it safe whenever possible. In the case of a movie theater, if someone starts shooting, how do I exit? What is a good strategy? What plan do I have? It's more about the plan than the stuff. It's more about the mindset. As we all know, when it comes to survivalism, it's always about the mindset, the strategy, the plans that you have, all of the role playing that you do and some of the, you know, the precautions you take and the plans you have ahead of time, the research that you do just in case things go wrong. All of that is involved here. Even when sitting with like-minded people, you're covering my back. I mean, I sat with people that I you know, barely knew, but I, I knew that they were you know, like-minded individuals and you naturally end up doing this sort of stuff. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of funny. And you know, even things that people in in more dangerous parts of the world in Latin America you always sit like where is my bag you don't leave your 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 purse if you're a woman you don't need leave your purse when having coffee or breakfast or dinner in, in, a, in a nice outdoor table you don't leave it just on top of the table someone will snatch it and run that is pretty much a given in, in some parts of the world for other people they don't even think about that they just leave their stuff there no one's gonna be attacking me no one's gonna be stealing from me that's not the mentality that they have now for for many of us, we do this. Our backpack, it goes right across our legs so as to not have it you know, stolen and snatched from beneath us. You don't leave it there in the table. You don't leave it there in the chair. These are things that you learn not to do. Anyway, I thought it's important to, yes, given that we have an actual live, you know, real world example of someone that was very well known for being a, a famous gunman, a, a famous gunslinger, how this stuff ended up costing him his life. Folks, you have the book, 
book available with a bunch of information that I think is super important. And for the economic aspect, surviving the economic collapse, my book, based on my experience, going through an economic collapse in Argentina, over a thousand reviews in Amazon. And by the way, I always appreciate if you take a, a second to leave a review in Amazon, that helps a lot, available in the links below there in the description. Take care, see you next time.